We're at the top of the state on the shores of Lake Superior. This is Ashland. We're on Lake Superior and this is Shawamigan Bay. So usually we meet John Gerd on his bike, not today. He's skipping stones Whoa. here on Shawamigan Bay. Oh. Hey John, good one. Thank you. Six skips. Six, that's all. You're, you're, you're quite a stone <laughs> I've, skipper. I've done 25 at times. <laughs> <laughs> we're in Ashland, uh -huh. a beautiful city. So we're on water. I'm presuming that the history of Ashland deals a lot with water. Uh, it does, John, going way, way back. For the Ojibwe people who lived here first, Shawamigan Bay was a great canoe route and a great source of fish. The white settlers who displaced them looked at the same bay and they saw a great harbor, protected and deep. The problem was they had nothing to ship. Hmm. So that began to change in the mid-1850s when there were rumors of ore strikes in the hills south of here and talk of a train to bring all that ore to the bay. So you certainly had potential here, uh, but Ashland was founded back in 1854 on nothing but hope. Oh. And one of the founders was a guy named Martin Beezer from Buffalo, whose idol was Senator Henry Clay. He named the town Ashland after Clay's Kentucky home. Is that right? Yeah. So Ashland began to boom? Not yet, not quite hmm. yet. All those rumors were just rumors. And talk of the train just disappeared. Things were so depressed that by 1863, there were only two people living in Ashland. Two? <laughs> yep. And the county seat had to be moved up the shore to Bayfield. Finally, in the 1870s, you had large-scale iron mining beginning in the Pinocchio Range, about 20 miles south of town. And the first train carrying ore to market arrived here back in 1877. Then the boom began. Okay. And what happened was within 15 years, Ashland had four railroad lines converging on it. They built some of the biggest ore docks in the entire world. One was 80 feet high and 1,800 feet long. And these trains would go out to the end of the line and just dump their cargoes into the holds of waiting ships. Mm. And the tonnage they shipped was amazing. Uh, 1885, the tonnage of iron ore coming out of here was 200,000 tons. Sure. Five years later, it was two million tons, Yikes, wow. and it kept on growing. Yeah. So the result was, you know, Ashland just grew like crazy. 13,000 people there by 1900, and for that reason, to this day, the high school team still called the ore dockers. So is iron ore all that came out of this port? No, John, they shipped whatever they could sell. Uh, that included brownstone from quarries nearby that went into a lot of buildings back east, and also a lot of lumber from pine forests cut nearby. At one time, there were 10 sawmills here on the lakefront, and they just dumped their waste right in the water. Mm. Not a pretty sight. If you wanted to swim here back in those days, you'd have to wade through sawdust soup. Wow. So was, was Ashland a wild town back then? It was, like all the lumber towns. Yeah. Uh, but there was always a finer side to life. Uh, 1892, a group of Congregationalists found what they call the North Wisconsin Academy to lift the lamp of learning in mm. the Northwoods. That evolved to Northland College, which has about 600 students today and one of the finest environmental liberal arts programs in the entire country. Both of my sons went to Northland. We come up here to Lake Superior summer vacations camping, and they came back as college students, had a great experience. So you know this town oh, well? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Yep. Can we talk about um, how the economy of this town developed? It changed over the years, John. Uh, by 1900, the pine were pretty much gone. Uh, brownstone was no longer in fashion. Uh, iron ore mining continued through the 1960s, but that faded too. The last ore dock was torn down in 2013, and it's now a park. So today, Ashland's economy is based on tourism, some manufacturing, and of course, Northland makes it a college town. And population today? About 8,000. Okay, and the location? Ashland is on the foot of Shawamiga Bay on Lake Superior, about 60 miles east of Superior Duluth. And I, uh, since we've been doing so much water, I think you should give up the bike and get a boat. <laughs> Can you do that? We just got back from three days kayaking on the Apostles, which was See? just wonderful. See, I, I knew it was coming. <laughs> Thanks, John. See you, John. This is the old train depot in downtown Ashland. It was built in 1889, and it was an active train depot until the 1960s. And the most interesting part of this building to me is the building material. It's called brownstone. It went out of favor in the early 1900s, and I don't understand why. They should bring this building material back. I think this building is gorgeous.
We're on board the Kayai. And what does the ship do? Okay, the ship is a fisheries research vessel for the Great Lakes. We use what's called a, a Yankee, a three-quarter Yankee bottom trawl. And if the trawl is a good trawl, we will catch fish. Really? And they range from this size to this size. This is the chart of the entire lake. Lake Superior is the largest freshwater lake in the world by surface area. And we have stations all along the shoreline that we do in every spring. And when you leave port, do you stay out for extended periods? Yeah, typically two to three weeks. We only work 12 hours a day, so we uh, tie up or anchor every night. What's your season? Typically middle of May to we try to go, go as far into November as the weather will let us. This table right here is where we bring the fish after we've taken them out of the trawl. Why is it important? In the early 20th century, sea lampreys came marching upstream and invaded the upper Great Lakes. And so we, we saw the collapse of fisheries due to the sea lamprey just basically taking out the lake trout. Every year since 1958, we've been out in Lake Superior sampling the fish. And we record all of that information for each one of these trawl toes. So we have a complete picture of the composition of the catch, the size of the fish, and the total weight. We want to know what they're eating. We want to know what is available for lake trout to eat so that we can better manage our fisheries on the lake. The lake was very different back in the early 60s. Yeah. Um, and we're back to a more normal state now. Good. So we look at Lake Superior as a success story. I mean, have put as much as 7,000 miles a year uh, yeah. covered on you know, back and forth across the lake on these surveys. Yep. Yep. In, yeah. a, in a vessel that only goes 12 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> if you drained Lake Superior onto the United States, the United States would be under five feet of water. It's true. Is this a big plant, comparatively speaking? No, it's really pretty small. It's a small one? Speaking. This particular plant was originally constructed in 1916. Did it always burn wood? No, no, no. They started experimenting with using wood for fuel back in 1978. There was multiple mills in this area that normally had to take their waste and take it out to a landfill to dispose of it. Yeah. Loggers that bring in when they go out and do their harvest, they bring in their waste wood. And then we have two suppliers that bring in chip railroad ties. Chip railroad ties. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you burn that to supply energy to who? To the surrounding area. We run about 99.9% .9 of the time on biomass. We've been the renewable leader for a number of years, which includes our solar gardens, includes our wind uh, resource, includes our hydro resource, uh, you know, and the biomass resource. In fact, this power plant is the first investor-owned utility power plant in the nation to generate electricity using biomass. So this is a pile of not wood? No, it's not. That's our tire we drive have fuel or shredded tires. The uh, plant was approached by the Wisconsin DNR in 2003. We mix in a small amount, so it adds a lot of heat. It helps our combustion process inside the boiler and actually helps us reduce our emissions because we get a better combustion cycle. Oh, there you go. Yeah. It's a hotter burning. Who would know that? Yeah. You. Our plant is capable of producing, on average, about 24 to 25 megawatts okay. per hour. On average, a typical home will use 750 kilowatts a month. A month? A month. How long would it take to get rid of all of this wood? I'm um, at about 5,000 tons. It would disappear in probably about eight days. Uh, so the, the Ashland, Ashland Essentials. The Ashland this Essentials. This comes out of this plant. That comes out of Ashland, yes. How did this plan end up in Ashland, Wisconsin? Well, Larson Picture Frames started right here in Ashland, Wisconsin by a guy named Roger Larson. He started making picture frames right out of his basement. And this plant was built in 2000 by a man who purchased it from Roger named Craig Ponzio. And then he sold in about 2000 to Berkshire Hathaway. So this is a Berkshire Hathaway? This is a Berkshire Hathaway. Company. We use a lot of poplar from the southeast, cherry, walnut. Hard maple's coming from Upper Michigan and Canada. And then we get basswood from here in Wisconsin. Are these cut here on property? No, so these will actually get boxed up in length molding and go out to our distribution network. So it's mostly the independent frame shop. When you go into that frame shop and you say, I like this molding, they order the molding from us and they, they make the picture frame out of that. This is where the knives are made. The knives that actually shape the profile. So you can see we've got all the heads here. And this is the actual shape, the top shape of a profile. So this is spinning in the machine as the wood goes through, and it, it, it cuts the profile. Do they keep them sharp here? Yes. Do you have any idea how many there are? I think it's six or 7,000. 
Is there much competition? Oh, there's a lot of competition, yeah. There are but a lot your more quality is best? Our quality is best, yes. Quality and service. Quality and service. Yeah. So what they're doing right here is they're looking at every single stick before we ship it out. They're looking for defects? Yeah. That's a there's defect? So I don't see it. <laughs> Is this molding, base molding? No, that's picture frame molding also. We don't make any uh, architectural molding here in this facility. We concentrate only on picture frame molds. These are actually done for the, uh, the FBI. <laughs> Wanted by the FBI. <laughs> right there. Okay, this is what I love about doing this show. I always get the best view. This time, of Ashland. Uh, this is Sue Martinson, and you are the muralist. I am one of the two muralists. One of the two who have done all of this in Ashland. Um, my colleague, Kelly Meredith, and I have mm -hmm. done them together for 15 years. We started 21 years ago. How many are total in this city? In this city, I think 19. 19, yeah. and are there plans for more? Oh, yes. Hey, guys. Now, I need to explain that every single person in our murals is an actual person from mm. Ashland's history. Every building that you see, every train engine, everything that we represent, we can document through historical photographs. And that does make us Wisconsin's historical mural capital. We like to call these our outdoor museums. Right. And, but really, it's more than that. It's an outdoor documentation of their families and what they've done for the community. And who gives the tours? It's a combination, an effort between the Chamber of Commerce mm -hmm. and the Bay Area Rural Transit, who owns the trolley. How, how long is the tour? How many do you uh, We on a, on a Saturday, I do two tours. Well, about an hour and 15 minutes, hour and a half, depending. OK. Now, so this yeah. is the largest. You know, we don't just talk about the murals. I like to talk about the history of Ashland. When this when dock was built, it was the largest store dock in the world. It is painted to scale. For me, it was economic development. Yeah. Improve the buildings, tell the history, develop the pride, get people to come here and take pictures and buy gas and eat and do trolley all tours, of all of that. And it's done that. And it's done that. Yeah. If it's you're so not painting fun. murals, what? What are you doing? Sleeping. <laughs> this is the Shawamigan uh, Food Co-op. It's become the hub of regional sustainability. Grow local, shop local, support local. And it really seems to be a philosophy that fits Ashland. We're on Chapel Street. It's a very popular street, especially in the morning. Why? Black Cat Coffee House, great coffee and right cross street, Ashland Baking Company. Come on. <laughs> I'll meet you on Chapel Street. So I'm meeting somebody who everybody in this town knows. They say he um, talks to everybody in town. His name is Gordy, and here he comes. Hello, Hi, Gordy. John. How are you? Good. Good to see you. So this is what I heard about you. Can I tell you? Yeah. Everybody knows you. Oh, yeah. They, they do? do? They do. Because how do they know you, Gordy? Because I go around town every day and do my thing. What's your thing? Walking and uh, walking, talking. Is that right? Yeah. I... Hey. What do you tell people about this town? I tell me it's great. Yeah. And it's a good community. I got that. So Main Street Ministry, mm -hmm. Gordy Johnson Jr., ambassador. For, you're an ambassador for Ashland, mm -hmm. Wisconsin. Yeah. If people are visitors, do they ask you questions about what to do and where to go? They do. What do you tell them? So I, I tell them the hot spots in town. That's part of the ministry. <laughs> yeah, that's part of what I do. Get yeah. people hope every day. Yeah. yeah. So if people yeah. see you in downtown Ashland, they should stop mm -hmm. and say hello. Oh, yeah. Before and you they, do. And they do. And they do, don't mm -hmm. they? They do. This is Megan McBride, who is the Director of Planning and Development for the City of Ashland. Yep. This community has the best looking trash cans I have ever seen. So they were made by the high school welding department and then the art program as well to do unique mosaics. They designed, they constructed them. Um, we kind of gave them our parameters and they worked with our public works department. Tamp and there's 15 like of these and they have four sides. Yes, and they're all unique, about half the mosaics with the high school. And then we opened it up to the community and had um, three days a week community mosaics sessions for anyone of all skill levels. It's not just on the garbage cans. Correct. There's tunnels and there's mosaics all over the place. Absolutely. There. So a uh, welcome and Bindigen? Bindigen. Bindigen. What, yep. is, what is that? It means welcome in Ojibwe. Oh. So um, we're right next to the Bad River um, Reservation here. And when was this done? 2016, okay. 2017. Is this there... is our main tunnel to connect okay. from Main Street to the lakefront. Above us is Highway 2, right? Correct. Yes. This is, so uh, it's a long tunnel and there's a, there's a lot of mosaics in here. What's at the end of so this? So at the end we have our giant lake trout and sturgeon, which 
I can't even tell you the number of man hours that went into those. We're talking to you not only because of the position you hold in the city, <laughs> but because we know that you um, graduated from Northland. Yeah. And if you could talk about that, That'd be it great. would be great. It started in the early to mid 1800s, yeah. um, so it's been a big part of the Ashland community for a long time. It takes up about seven percent of the city's population um, in terms of student bodies. What's the main focus of study? It's an environmental liberal arts college. We have a lot of focus on this region, so it's a very place-based kind of education where yeah. it's kind of hard not to fall in love with the area once you come. Here. It's beautiful, isn't it? It is beautiful. And you couldn't uh, see a more picturesque campus. Absolutely. It's gorgeous this time of year. This is not what I imagined at all. No, most people don't. Well, if you would have seen it five years ago, you would have seen a, a shack of a boathouse sitting yeah. in the water. Is that most right? Of them yes. were. Most yeah. of them were. Well, you could see the lake through the floor. My uncle owned a few of the boathouses down here, and then my dad. We yeah. drew it out, and we had a local carpenter same, hoist it out of the, the water and contractor. shore it up. And we had to use historic construction materials. materials. Yeah. Like, and it maintains the original footprint. So yeah. it's, it's where it was. We try to respect the history of these. Yeah. You know, so the outside with the corrugated steel looks authentic. People are often surprised when they come inside. We've learned how to make everything sort of in miniature. Two sleeping lofts. Yep. And yeah. all the comforts of home. Yep, this yeah. slides out and creates a stairway up to that all side. <laughs> we can sleep four right now. Right. Yeah. Six if we had to. Six if we had to, yeah. And is it weekends all year you can Pretty enjoy here? So. Yeah, because it's foam insulated, we have a ceramic propane fireplace in the corner, and that heats it up because it's a small space very well, even in even in the cold nights of winter. Oh, it's wonderful. Oh, and the view is yeah. wonderful. The otters were swimming out a little while ago. Got my binoculars there. People kayak up by the deck and talk to stuff and talk to us. And Take pictures. Because we don't own the land. We just own the building. So yeah. the land itself is a park. Do they come up for sale much? They're at a premium. You can't build anymore. Right. And so anytime any one of these is up for sale, doesn't last long. People. We can maintain it and we can uh, retain its footprint. And that's your it. responsibility. That's it, yeah. yeah. And that's how we help to preserve a little bit of Wisconsin history. Right. My brother Michael usually does this, yeah. just so you know. He's not here today. So well, you're doing great I'm so far. <laughs> taking over sports. Awesome. Let's talk girls soccer here in Ashland. How many are on your team? Uh, we have about 30 or so. The coaches at the feeder program and the directors do a great job of developing our players. Um, when they get to me, it's really nice because they have a good foundation laid and I can just put them into place, tweak some things, and continue to work on adjusting to the high school varsity so they level. So they did the hard work? Well, you could say they've done a lot of it. Yeah, they, absolutely. <laughs> I've heard you played. I did, I did. did I, I played at UW Parkside. It's a Division II school, and then played in the MPSL after that. I mean, I grew up here and played nice. here myself, and so to come back and give back to the community that gave so much to me is a great opportunity. Uh, we pride ourselves in um, playing with respect for one another, for other teams. Um, we always respect our opponents. I always tell the girls after a win or a loss, remember what it feels like to win, remember what it feels like to lose when yeah. you go through that line. And obviously it's paid off. We won for the third time the Rural Mutual Bank Sportsmanship Award. One of the biggest parts of our program is being a respectful opponent. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. I am outside the Northern Great Lakes Visitor Center. And do you know why it's so big? Guess why? Because the Great Lakes are so big. Artesian well, there's four or five of these all over Ashland. BYOB, FYOB. Bring your own bottle, fill your own bottle. That's the best water I've ever tasted. Is this your own? It is, is yes. It? It's on the property and in the restaurant we use it to make all of our iced tea, our lemonade, our soup. They'll come here, fill their water bottles up. But when you come to the restaurant and order water, you're getting our Artesian well water right from our private well. It's freezing, it's delicious. Isn't it awesome? Isn't it good water? Yeah. This is a great building. It looks like a huge boat to me. The developer had the vision of really building a marquee building as the gateway into Ashland. So we're right on US Highway 2. This is a really cool building. The concept is you can stay, you can play, and you can eat oh, in this building. And it's called the Blue Wave Building. So it's a really neat concept. People can come in, check in here at the outdoor store, go to their room, go next door, have a cocktail, grab a coffee, sit outside, watch the sunset. So it's really And the next morning take off on, right. on the lake. Right. We rent kayaks, bicycles, um, paddle boards. 
And then we also sell really high quality outdoor clothing and gear for anybody that's going to get, do adventures on Lake Superior or just go camping, that kind of thing. Which is right out your door. It is, it's yeah, right it's here. Like, this is what you should wear to go there. Exactly, right? yep, yep. You can just sleep here when we turn the lights off. That's how it works. <laughs> this is actually the start of the Book Across the Bay Ski Race. These are very coveted rooms come the, uh, like around the 14th of February, around Valentine's Day when and the ski they, race. And then they make their then way to Washburn. Then they book across the bay to Washburn. Each room is individually decorated and with a theme, kind of a Northwoods theme. They all feature beautiful rain showers. This is a handicapped accessible room too. And a big part of our business are local customers. You know, we're in Northern Wisconsin. We're open seven days a week year round. Right. It's called the Sandbar, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. This is the yeah. best place in town to watch the sunset. Yes, inside, outside dining. We even have outside fire pits as well. Our idea is common food done uncommonly well. This Pop your over mom's, time. Your mom's recipe? My mom's popover recipe. She's gonna love that you're trying this. And what a concept to have three businesses that that could stand alone right. and come under one roof right. and really be harmonious with each other. Yeah, yeah, it's really about outfitting folks to go out to the Apostle Island, going out with families. So yeah, yeah you can get a little bit of everything here. There's nothing like a good popover. So usually if I'm standing in front of a large lake in Wisconsin, I'm standing in front of Lake Michigan. Not today, we're in Ashland. This is Lake Superior. I didn't know much about Lake Superior, now I do. I'm gonna teach you, here it is. Lake Superior, the largest of the Great Lakes of North America. It's also the world's largest freshwater lake by surface area, and the third largest freshwater lake by volume. That's Wikipedia. Do you wanna hear Wikipedia? Yeah. Lake Superior is big. When you call it Anglers All, that's quite encompassing, is it not? It says we have it for you, so come on in. These are walleye-sized sucker minnows. I have live bait. I see that. I have <laughs> night crawlers and mm -hmm. leeches in the refrigerator. And what will they catch? Fish. <laughs> Any kind. You never know what the fish are going to want to feed on. You don't want to eat the same thing every day. No, I right? don't. Neither no. do they. Yeah, well, interesting, yeah. yeah. We have not only Lake Superior, the Great Lakes fishing, and the small boat fishing just in the bay. We have the cold water fishery, and then in the spring, and in the winter, and in the fall, this turns into a warm water and a cold water fishery mm. inside Shawamigan Bay. So we have all the species in here. And you've been in this business a little while? 35 years. 35 years. How did you get into this business? My husband, he fell in love with the area, and he was the one who taught me about fishing yeah. and the out of doors. He kind of got all of the guiding going for smallmouth. And so our average fish right now is in the realm of 19 inches, which is a pretty darn big smallmouth. My husband always wanted to see this fishery left better than we found it. There you go. And I'm very proud to say that that's his legacy. I found a great sweet shop in town. Gabrielle's German cookies, chocolates, and gifts. And see the witch in the window there? Yeah, this is what Gabrielle says. You want to see the real witch? Come on in. Why do you have a witch up in the window? Because I can't stand up there all day long. I have to work. <laughs> sweet witch. Do you know when this building was built? Around 1894, wow. 1895. Yeah. One of the originals in the city of Ashland. This concept is very original as well. Right here is Deepwater Grill. So and we call this it is South Shore Brewery, yes? The middle bar. The middle bar. The, the middle bar. Okay. Because now this building has three bars yeah. and two restaurants all set. And this is Northern Lights. It's known as a cream ale. So, so you're a brewer, really? I am a brewer. Yeah, and brewer. where's where's your brewery? Well, the, in the main dining room, you'll see the pub side of my life over there. Okay. We do five core beers. They range in the styles from the light to dark, but during the course of the year, we'll do about 23 other beers that are featured here at the restaurant wow. for the most part. This is how it's served. It is. <laughs> That's so cool. It's how it's gone to the table, you bet. So this is three storefronts that has kind of three different concepts. Yes. In the alley, you get burgers, pizza, casual. The, the deep water is a little bit more formal. This is probably our biggest selling item on, on the menu. Whitefish. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a very mild fish. It comes fresh right out of Lake Superior. Seasonally, um, is summer? Summer's the big tourism time yeah. for, you know, for Ashland. There's so many reasons to come up north and just get out of the big cities and 
away from the traffic. Uh, a lot of great places to see and visit in the Schwamigan Bay area, but yeah, this, yeah. Is, this has been known as a destination location for it. Coming up with the closing word for Ashland was easy. We sure did. This is the job you have today. Tell us why Ashland, Wisconsin is the best place in the world to live, work, and play. That's easy. Okay, okay we start with the people. Great people here, kind, friendly, generous, good-hearted, hearty people. On Lake Superior, the greatest of the Great Lakes, great recreation, city with a small town feel. We are a recreational hub. We are a regional hub for services. We have a state-of-the-art hospital with world-class cancer treatment center, mm. great doctors. We've got uh, amenities such as a marina, an airport, golf course, uh, downtown Three, theater. Two, one. And yeah, no, that's it. You're done. You're... Do you know the Ojibwe name for Lake Superior? Getchagami. Do you know what it means? It means. <laughs> what does it mean? A Oh, I can't even say well, it. Well, you want me to say <laughs> it? No, I don't want you. To... <laughs> if you emptied Lake Superior. Into the out of over. What preposition? Creating the series is really a joy for us. And we wouldn't be able to do it without the generous support of our underwriters. So, underwriters, thanks. Thank you. The Greater Milwaukee Foundation's Ernest C. and Florence M. Shockey Fund. And by the David A. and Nancy E. Putz Fund. The Greater Milwaukee Foundation. Inspiring philanthropy, serving donors, and strengthening communities now and for the future. Michaels Corporation, serving the energy, transportation, telecommunications, and utility industries. Michaels, constructing North America's infrastructure for our future. We Energy's Foundation and Wisconsin Public Service Foundation are proud to support public television. Together we create a brighter future for the communities we serve. ATC moves electricity from where it's generated to communities where it's needed. American Transmission Company, helping to keep the lights on, businesses running, and communities strong.